in Habakkuk chapter 2. And the Lord is setting the prophet up because he has to help them to understand some things about vision. The first thing he has to understand, them to understand is that every vision comes with process. Right? We talked about that. Every vision comes with process. That if you're going to walk in real vision, you got to be ready for a good process. And you got to be ready for a process that don't uh, that doesn't belong to you. It cannot be controlled by you, and it doesn't need your permission. Right? It, 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 it doesn't need you to feel good. Every vision has a process. And so the prophet now is, is looking at God's process, and he finds himself in a conflict within himself. I'm finds himself in the midst of a process because the problem with the vision is that what God is saying doesn't look like what he's seen. What God is saying doesn't look like what he's seen. And he has a problem with this because what God sounds like doesn't look like what he looks like. Okay? And, and he's struggling now with God because God is the only one that will speak something in your life that don't match anything you see in your life. And he's had to hold on to what God said despite how he feels about what he sees. a problem because as he deals with this whole thing of it being God's vision, his vision, the, what he has to understand is that sometimes God will put a vision on your life that don't match what you want. So not only is the prophet having to deal with the part of the vision that doesn't look like what he's seeing, he's also having to deal with the part of the vision that doesn't feel like what he wants. Uh, it, the vision is beyond the prophet's desire. And the prophet now is having to process these things in the midst of this vision, in the midst of what's going on. He's having to process this, first of all, because it doesn't look like what, it, what, it, what God sounds like. And it doesn't feel like what he wants it to be. And yet God is saying, this is my vision for your life. And he's having to accept it. Now, one thing I want to say really quick about this whole part of, of, of being able to hold on to God's word, even, does it, even though it doesn't match your visible circumstance. The one thing I want to talk about is this really, really quick. If you can hold on and survive the process, then what will happen is you'll experience this thing that I call divine reversal. Or in the getaway, the flip of the script. <laughs> the flipping of the script. Because what happened is, there's a point in your life where you go through and you say, God, you keep telling me this stuff, but you ain't showing me nothing. But if you can hang on, and if you can survive the process, what will happen is, you'll get to a place where you're out of the process, and you'll start telling people about your process. And if people will look at you just as confused as you looked at God, and say, I don't understand why you're talking to me about this stuff, because now you don't look like what you're talking about. You don't look like what you sound like. And I'm trying to understand how is this possible. It's all because you survived the process. If you can be faithful through the part that don't look like what you want it to look like, then God can flip it around and God can make you look like what you should. Man, he can make you not look like what you should look like. You'll be like, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I used to be a thief, I used to be a liar, I used to be a drunkard, I used to be a crackhead, I used to be this, I used to be that. And people will look at you and say, I don't believe you. How in the world did you survive what you're telling me? You don't look like a person that will punch somebody in the face. You don't look like a person that used to be broke. You don't look like a person that came from poverty. You don't look like God said, if you can survive his process, then he Because he survived the process, he was able to get the divine 
universal. The divine reciprocal. God was able to do for him what he, what he struggled for God to do in the process. And so now the prophet now is having to endure the process and he's in between what God said and what God still needs to do. And we discovered that in order to survive the in-between aspect of the process, you have to survive it by faith. He says the just man shall live by his faith. Faith is important to my process. Faith is important to my process, not just not just faith itself, but he says his faith, which means it has to be my faith. When I step into an aspect of it becoming my faith, that means the vision has become my vision. It has become personal to me. It has become a personal part of my life. And now I, what I uh, let me say, see if I can say it like this. It's hard to stop a person who is possessing of their own faith. It's difficult to stop a person who believes. Is there anybody in this room that believes? If you believe, I tell you to shout at me right now. Yes. <laughs> 
is a divine process. Yeah, yeah. And you cannot, you cannot, oh gosh, I'm gonna say this. You cannot overcome or survive divine processes in natural strength. Yeah. You need faith. Because faith gives God. And it invites God into the process. You're not strong enough to handle this by yourself. And that's okay. Because if you have faith, you won't ever have to handle it by yourself. I told you this last week, I'm going to say it again. Earth was never meant to operate outside of a collaboration with heaven. Man was always supposed to have a divine involvement in his earthly processes. He always needed the spirit. So when Adam and Eve sinned in the garden, they cut off their spiritual capacity. And God spent all the while up until he got to Jesus uh, trying to deal with man as man would allow him to do so, still dealing with him in the spirit. But when Jesus came, Jesus said, when I leave, I'm going to send a comforter. I won't leave you comforted. I'm going to give you my spirit. Why? Because you always have always needed the spirit's operation in your earthly circumstances. And if you are trying to walk away on earth without heaven, you are actually defeating your own words. I need heaven. I need heaven. I need the favor of heaven. I need the power of heaven. I need the residue of heaven to operate in the midst of my earthly circumstances. I was not designed to live on this earth The way you tap heaven is by faith. Yeah. Yeah. The way you tap heaven is by faith. So the prophet now is dealing in the situation and he catches a really good uh, understanding, a really good revelation of heaven. And as he catches his revelation of heaven, he catches all this, catches his revelation of faith, he moves on to the next thing. And here's the key to that. Um, uh, faith requires a word-induced environment in order to come. Because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word. So if I'm going to operate in faith, I have to have heard or known or received some, some aspect of the word of God. I cannot have faith. You cannot have faith where you do not have word. Come on. Come on. Come on. Good. Say it again. Say it again because some of y'all don't like it when I say that. Amen. You cannot have faith if you do not have word. Word is important to my process. Reading my Bible is important to my process. And so faith, because it's through the word of God that I develop my faith. Faith requires a word-induced environment in order to function in my life. I have to I have to have the word.